So I'm going to be exploring a piece by Franz Liszt, which is the Hungarian Rhapsody Number no. Two. This was composed during the Romantic period. Yay! I'm going to be bringing you guys with me as I learn more about this piece. So I know a bit about the piece. I know that it's inspired by Hungarian folk melodies. That it's a rhapsody. So tomorrow I'm going to be sharing more about what I've learned. So, see you tomorrow. Hey everyone! So right now I'm at our library. I think I know a sufficient amount of information regarding this piece, so... I think the piece was interesting. I expected it to have a lot of mood since it's a rhapsody. Rhapsodies are one movement pieces that have contrasting moods. So yeah, I can't really tell if this piece tells a story because of how it has so many moods. So basically, the whole piece starts out dark and mysterious, and then the tempo increases, and the tempo slows down again, then it becomes light and energetic and really, really fast. So I can't really tell if there's a story being told, but it kind of feels like there's a battle of emotions, if that makes sense. So obviously this Hungarian Rhapsody represents the culture of Hungarian people. The Rhapsody was said to imitate Hungarian melodies since um, Franz Liszt is Hungarian. This was written during the Romantic period where uh, formerly suppressed cultures or people were starting to express themselves through art. So Franz Liszt was one of those artists who started to express themselves through music. So yeah, that's pretty much all I can say right now. But then how do I end this? I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, so right now we're at Rob North. So I've done more research about this piece and I've listened to it more and more. I'd like to add more information on uh, the origin of this piece or how this piece came to be. So this piece obviously represents the Hungarian culture. Franz Liszt is Hungarian himself, but he didn't spend most of his life in Hungary. He spent most of it outside of Hungary. So he didn't really have a lot of knowledge or enough knowledge on the Hungarian culture and music. He compiled a bunch of Hungarian folk melodies and sort of like based the Hungarian rhapsodies on these folk melodies. So these rhapsodies are based on Hungarian folk tunes. I've listened to a bunch of Hungarian folk tunes. There's actually a lot of similarities between the Hungarian folk music and the Hungarian rhapsodies by Franz Liszt. Both of them, they start off slow or in moderate tempo, then they just gradually get faster and faster. They have like a couple of moods going on. So, yeah. Okay, so I'm back home. Right now, basically, I'm just gonna be wrapping up this whole vlog, but before I end this vlog, I'm gonna be talking about the last few things that I've learned about this piece. So, was there anything in the piece that stood out for me? Yes. I really like the second half of the piece. So apparently, this piece had two sections. The first section is called the last sign and the second is Friska. So the first section obviously is the slow one and the second is the really fast one. I like the second one. I liked it because of how energetic and lively it is. The first part just made me feel sleepy, but when I heard the second half, I was really hooked. It was really good. Characteristics of romanticism in the piece. So I noticed how there was a sense of nationalism in the piece considering that Franz Liszt is Hungarian and though he didn't spend most of his life in Hungary, he still loved his country enough to actually put effort into compiling Hungarian melodies and making the Hungarian rhapsodies. I also noticed how there's freedom in form. 
So it says here that there are denser textures with bold dramatic contrasts, which we noticed in Hungarian Rhapsody. Wider range of pitches, dynamics, and tone color. So all of these, they help the composer be able to express themselves more. So compared to classical musicians, I noticed that romantic musicians were more expressive. There's so much going on in this piece compared to like the classical music I've listened to. They sound very conservative, the form is so structured, unlike this one where oh, it's unpredictable. Although I knew that there would be contrasting moods because it's a rhapsody, I didn't expect it to be that fast. It's pretty interesting. So I guess the characteristic of romanticism that I found most appealing in this piece was how moods were expressed in this piece. Would I explore more performances by this composer? Yes. Other than Franz Liszt being such a great composer, it's important for people, especially aspiring musicians, to learn and understand how music was back then and understand how music has evolved to be able to fully grasp and understand how music is today. A lot of technicalities we have in music today are based on the music we had back then. So it's no question how a lot of music schools today have classical and romantic music as their foundation of teaching music. Music is amazing. Music is cool. Thanks for watching my vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope to see you all soon. It's still red. It's still red. That's good.